What's happening guys? How are you all doing today? I hope you're all safe and everybody is okay. So, in a recent video, uh, I asked if one of you guys or some of you guys would actually like me to go through some of my collection. Uh, it got quite a positive response and a fair few of you actually said yes. So, that is what today's video is going to be about. So, as you can see, it's a little bit tucked away at the back here, but <clears throat> this is my current setup for how I keep my cards stored. Um, I do plan to get some bigger shelving and probably make it look a little bit nicer and everything set out but for the time being this is sort of satisfactory <clears throat> so on the top here what you can see is we have this cipher cutout card uh, made from the cipher energies which has a first edition Acropolis set Japanese cipher on there it's a bit hard to show because of the glare but if I show from that angle it's a bit better um, we then have the Pokeball tins now we all know that the pulls from these are absolutely rubbish, but the tins themselves are quite nice for little display items. Um, I'm actually missing the luxury ball tin, and I've been struggling to get a hold of that. So if anybody knows where I can get a hold of that, please let me know. Uh, UK obviously only, I'm not paying for the import fees from America. Um, I've got two cards here which I'm waiting for PSA to reopen so I can send them off. Um, that's actually a Cosmo Holofoil matchup, not a regular matchup, so it's a little bit different. Uh, and another first edition again I think is Acropolis so that will be added hopefully to my PSA set which you see here um, now I only actually collect PSA cards that are Cypher and Scizor so and they generally I generally collect anything that's sort of 8 and better I'm not too fussed about them being 10s so here's a couple of my PSA graded cards stand that up Feel free to obviously pause if you want to have a look at any of them. Probably my crown jewel at the moment is my 1996 uh, Cardass vending card, which is absolutely gorgeous. <clears throat> now, I don't generally collect foreign cards, such as Japanese cards or anything like that. I usually just collect the English set. But you will see that I do actually collect the Japanese cards in the PSA graded ones. Just purely because there are some cipher cards that I absolutely love that you can't get from the English set. Um, but what I am aiming to do is to try and clean the Japanese and English of every card for Cypher and Scizor. So, nice VS series card there, which is again one of the ones that you can't get in English. And then lastly we have the Neo 4 Dark Scizor, which I've got two of, which is one of the ones that you guys can win once we hit 250 subs. I'll be doing another giveaway on that. So that's everything off the top shelf, that's just like my little general sort of nice display. And then down here we have all of the binders. So like I said, it's a little bit tight, so it's a bit hard to show you from this angle. But that is my current setup. So they're just lever arch files with some nice card sleeves in, which you'll see a little bit later. Um, and the images I've just sort of designed and printed myself for the logos. <clears throat> so again, I've got those. Now the one at the end there with the sword and shield in doesn't actually have the sword and shield in. I've had to move that to its own separate file. I just haven't had a chance to recreate the binder label yet. Reason being is Cosmic Eclipse is such a big set, it's actually took up nearly a whole binder to itself. And then down on the bottom here we have, well, what is the sword and shield? And then obviously my McDonald's, uh, general bits and pieces, and my promo cards. So, what we'll do is for today's video is we will take a look at this first binder here which is the base set fruit to team rocket so the original first generation cards and we will do that in three two one and just like that guys we are at the recording bench aka the dining room table anyway i do apologize firstly if the camera's a little bit shaky um it, what i was planning on using the tripod but because i want to showcase some of the cards a little bit closer um, it made it a little bit awkward to have to keep removing the camera from the tripod to sort of show you things So I'm going to sort of be doing this with the handheld camera uh, So as I say the recording will be a little bit shaky again. I apologize So this is how my binders are set up. I have a sort of printed sheet at the front of them Which actually showcases all of the cards that I have in there um, And what I do is as you can see here I have white sleeves for one set, grey sleeves for the next set, and so on and so on, just so I can differentiate between the, the changing set. Um, <clears throat> not that the obviously dividing sheets isn't a hint anyway. 
Now, <clears throat> the first page, which is probably the most glorious page of all of this, is, there it is, the original Charizard. So, these are where Pokemon cards kind of began, as a lot of you will know. Um, now, I don't, unfortunately, have my original cards from when I was a child. Uh, I actually sold them when I was a teenager because I needed the money at the time. So every card I have in here is what I've collected over the last month. As you'll know from the checklist, I have a full beer set, uh, beer set, check, set. can't get me words out, sorry. <clears throat> now you'll notice there's two Blastoises in here, now there's a reason for that. Uh, they are actually different cards. So you'll see here that is the, a standard Blastoise. Now this one here, can you spot the difference? No? So this is a fourth print Blastoise, which is unique to the UK. And what you'll notice is down here, see how it says 1999 to 2000? You'll notice that that is actually a fourth print edition, which was an additional print run that we had here in the UK. Uh, so your standard card just has the 1999 on there. So the fourth print edition, as far as I'm aware, is actually harder to come by than the Shadowless, purely because it was only printed in the UK. However, it's not as well a known print run and therefore doesn't hold the same value as Shadowless cards. Plus, I suppose only the UK people kind of hold a little bit of nostalgia for it. Um, but they are slowly going up in value, especially the fourth print hollows. So I do actually intend on getting a full fourth print set. So as you can see, we've got our regular hollows here. So we've got Chansey, Charizard in very nice condition there. Not immaculate. <clears throat> but I wouldn't keep an immaculate card in my binder anyway. That would generally go off to PSA for grading. And again, you can see we've got the fourth print Hitmonchan there. Now, one thing you might notice about the fourth print, actually, is especially when we get to the sort of commons and uncommons, is that fourth print cards are slightly lighter in colour um, compared to your standard cards. So... We've got three different matchamps here, and again, you might not be able to tell the difference straight away. So this is your regular matchamp on the left here. This is a fourth print matchamp, and this one here is actually from technically base set two. And basically, it's, it's quite a rare card. It's, it's actually the same as what I showed you earlier in the video that I'm going to be sending off to PSA, but this one's not in as good a condition. Um, it's a Cosmo hollow foil. So if you can see there, see how it's got the dots? compared to your typical one which has the, the Galaxy foil. Uh, and the Cosmo Hollow foil came from the Base Set 2 um, Fiend deck which included the CD-ROM. But the reason it's quite a rare card is that not all of those Base Set 2 Fiend decks actually came with this print. A lot of them came with the old original print. So the Cosmo Hollow foil is actually a lot more rare than your standard Hollow foil matchups. Now obviously you can get the shadowless one as well, which is actually probably the most rare of the three, uh, or four in this case. So you can see here I've got the hollow magnetons and Mewtwo's. Again, we've got a fourth print. And same with the Ninetales, we have a fourth print and Ninetales. I think there is a couple of error cards you can watch out for the Ninetales, but I'm not entirely sure as to what they are. We then come up here and we've got the Polyrath, Raichu and Venusaur. One of the big guys there. Nice Venusaur card. I think that's probably the second most valuable from base set. I think it still holds a little bit more value than Blastoise, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Zapdos, the rares that you then get into. So we've got Beedrill, Dragonair. Again, we've got some fourth print. Like the Bose Electrode, another fourth print card there. So this Arcanine is probably a good example to show you how the, the colour differentiates between regular and fourth print. So <clears throat> that is a standard unlimited print Arcanine. This is a fourth print Arcanine and you can see it looks a little bit sort of faded in colour. So that's an easy way when you sort of flick them through the cards other than obviously looking for the sign at the bottom to sort of differentiate. Uh, down here we have three different variations of Charmeleon. You'll notice the one on the far left is actually a shadowless Charmeleon. So you'll note that it doesn't actually have the shadow down this side. Uh, I don't have any first edition Pokemon cards 
the monster based Pokemon cards from the base set, but I think I do have a first edition trainer. So I can show you the first edition stamp for that. So I'm just going to slowly go through it all. As you can see, we've got a lot of fourth print in there. Now, you guys are probably going down a little bit of a nostalgia trip here. Some of you might not have seen these for a very long time. We've got a nice shadowless Kadabra there. Shadowless Kakuna. So I do actually have quite a few shadowless cards. Not loads, but a nice handful of them. Some more fourth print. So I was actually going to leave open the spaces for all of these, but because things like the first editions are so hard to come by, I kind of wanted it to look a little bit more presentable. So generally when I do get a card that I'm missing, I tend to actually have to pull all the cards out and repost them all back in. It's a bit of a pain, but you know, in the meantime, it's few and far between when I get a first edition of a Shadowless, so it's nice to show them this way. So we've got a nice Shadowless Diglett there, followed by the Unlimited and 4th edition print Diglets. Again, we've got a Shadowless Matchup, one of the few Shadowless cards I've got. Obviously, if there's anything you want to look at a little bit closer, feel free to sort of pause the video. There probably will be a little bit of a long video by the time we get through this binder. I'm hoping to not make it too long. A Shadowless Star Me there, followed by a Shadowless Star You. Now, here's a neat little one that you might not know. So, the Vulpix, we've got the regular Vulpix and the Shadowless Vulpix. Now you'll notice that Vulpix is the only card that has the HP the wrong way around. So your standard card would have the number followed by HP, but the unlimited Vulpix was actually printed in error and had the HP followed by the number. However, for the fourth print in the UK, they actually corrected this and put the HP the right way around. Now for this print of Vulpix, the fourth print is the only one with the corrected HP. Even the base set 2, which was printed much later, doesn't have the correct HP. It's back to the original. So it's a little bit strange that, but yeah, it's a cool little thing. Again, we've got a few fourth prints in here. I'm not going to spend too much time going through the, the trainers because they're not as exciting as the actual Pokemon. There's one of the few first edition, well, in fact, it's the only first edition card I've got from base set. It's a little bit of a weird one, though, because it's it's a very faint sort of print for the first edition. I thought it was fake at first, but it's actually not. It's genuine. Um, and there is a lot of things like that when it comes to base set, because they were obviously messing about with different card stocks and printer inks and stuff like that. You do often get, like, print errors and different sort of colour shades. So you could have two unlimited cards and they could both look completely different in the way they're printed. As in one could look darker, one could look lighter, the backs could look completely different. So again, the different energies I've got are all just fourth print, except for when you get to the lightning. And that there is actually a shadowless lightning. And the way you can tell with the energies in train is if they're shadowless, is they will have the additional 99 here compared to your standard print which just has 98. So that's a good way to keep an eye out for those guys. You might come across those in your little bundles and not even know you have them. So that's it for base set. We then get on to jungle, which again I have complete. Um, when I say complete, I don't have all the first editions or anything like that, but as far as an unlimited set, I do have a complete unlimited set. So we've got some nice little hollows here. Clefable, Electrode, Flareon. And then a Jolteon, which I think back in the day was the chase card for this set. Uh, and probably to this day it still holds the most value. Uh, Pidgeot, which is actually my most favoured artwork from this set. It's fantastic artwork. And I don't think there's been a Pidgeot that's beat that artwork since. The main man himself there, Cypher. And we've got our Snorlax, Vaporeon, Venomoth, Victory Bell. Vile Plume, Wigglytuff, Clefable, Electrode, 
Uh, actually, in case anybody's wondering as well, I use these Ultimate Guard sleeves. Uh, fantastic little sleeves, double sided, side loading as well, which makes it harder for your cards to fall out. Um, I probably should upgrade to three ring or four ring binders just to hold them a little bit better. But the way I sort of stand them on the shelves anyway, and how full the files are, tends not to damage the cards, so we're good there. And when you do buy binders, guys, make sure you buy the D-ring binders, because if you get the O-ring binders, you can tend to get a binder bite on your card, where it closes or it folds over, and that just completely ruins it. So we do have a first edition door drill there. You might have spotted that. And I think I've got a fair few first editions, commons and uncommons. So we've got like the Lickitung there, for instance. An arena. And like I say, I think my goal eventually is to have a first edition set as well alongside this, which would be nice. And I'm very sort of OCD when it comes to setting up my binders. I do like to have them all in number order. And I do have them in order of their actual print run. So you'll notice in the base set I had first edition, shadowless, unlimited, then fourth print. <coughs> Now you guys getting excited for Rebel Clash, I know that's coming up soon. Um, I've got a few things on order, so we'll be doing a few Rebel Clash videos once that comes out. Then we've got the Fossil set, which again, I've got complete, as far as the Unlimited is concerned anyway. Now I've got a few first edition hollows in this actually. So we have the Aerodactyl there, Aerodactyl, Dale, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Articuno, a first edition Ditto there. Ditto regular Dragonite, which I believe is the chase card, followed closely by Gengar, which again was another very favourable card in the set. Haunter, first edition Hitmon Lee. Hypno, first edition Kabutops. Lapras Magneton. Nice first edition again. Moltres was another valuable card from the set. And then we've got three different Zapdoses here. So again, very similar to the Machamp. So firstly, we've got this first edition Zapdos, and this is actually an error print Zapdos. Now it might be a little bit hard for me to show on the camera, but if you see it there, you see this top corner? It actually has no hollow in the top corner where a stage box would generally be. So you can just about make it out, but the hollow is actually missing where the stage box would generally be. Uh, it's quite a common error, you can get it in both the first edition and the regular unlimited set. Then we've got the regular hollow Zapdos, followed by a Cosmo hollow foil Zapdos, which actually came from the, I think it's the Thunderstorm collection box, or theme deck box. Uh, it's quite a common Zapdos, it's not too rare. You can actually get that hollow print in some of the other hollows, but they are actually error prints and shouldn't actually be ho uh, Cosmo hollow. So if you do get them, they do actually have quite a bit of value to them. One thing I didn't like about the sort of jungle and fossil sets was the fact that you had both hollow and non hollows of the same card. Kind of wish they kept it a bit like base set where the, the non holo rares were completely different Pokemon. Um, I wasn't a fan of that, but it is what it is. So again, we've got a few first edition coming up here in the uncommons and onwards. I think I've got quite a few of the first edition uncommons and commons. Love that magma artwork. Fantastic artwork. Used to be one of my favourite cards as a kid. So as you can see, I've got quite a few of the first edition commons so far. Uh, I don't think we're too far away actually from completing the uh, first edition common and uncommon set at least which is quite nice. I think I might go and buy a few singles just to sort of finish that off. 
Uh, it would be something quite nice to have, even if I don't have all the first edition hollows. We then move into beer set 2, which I think is the only set I don't have complete from this file. Um, I'm missing a few of the hollows and one or two of the rare trainers. Now, beer set 2 is basically a reprint, I believe, of beer set and jungle. Uh, and I think it's actually one of the only Wizards of the Coast sets that they never did a first edition print run for. So, yeah, it was a bit of a strange one. Missing that, be said to Charizard, which is probably up there on my list to get soon. I'm not going to spend too long going through these, because obviously these are just sort of reprints of cards you've already seen. So we'll just have a quick flick through these. And as far as I'm aware, there's nothing major as far as error runs and stuff like that are concerned for these. Um, not to my knowledge, anyway. Now, base set 2 as a kid, I used to hate. I used to actually think it was just a fake set. Didn't beat the originals, and I, I actually didn't collect it. If I ever got a base set 2 card, I actually used to sort of chuck them away, rip them, trade them. Used to get rid of them as fast as I could, really. Absolutely hated base set 2. But, now that I am a collector and I'm older, I've got to have it. Strange how things change. So as you notice, I'm actually only a collector of English cards. Outside of my PSA ciphers and sizes, I don't actually collect any Japanese or foreign cards. There's that Vulpix I was talking about earlier. So as you can see, it's actually a later print run with a 2000. Yet the HP has reverted back to the old HP. Which I thought was a little bit strange. I figured once they corrected it on the fourth print, they would have corrected it outright. But something they never did. And then finally, my favourite artwork set of all time. I absolutely love this set. I've actually only just recently completed this. Um, there's one or two cards that aren't in the best condition and I will love to replace, but for the most part it is absolutely fantastic. So we've got the Dark Alakazam, Arbok, and that gorgeous Dark Blastoise. And we do have a Dark Charizard Hollow there. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see the hollow on that, but there we go. That shows it a little bit better. Dark Dragonite, which I think is the second most valuable card from the set. Followed by Charizard and then closely followed by the Blastoise. Dug Trio, Goldbat, Dark Gyarados. And we then have a pre-release Dark Gyarados. I'm not entirely sure where that comes from. Um, I think they might have been handed out at events and stuff like that. <clears throat> Dark Hypno, Dark Machamp, Dark Magneton, Dark Slowpro, which is another one which is very difficult to tell that it's actually hollow, but if you hold it up to the light you can see that. That crease is actually just in the binder, don't worry guys, it's not in the card. Now you'll notice there's a space here, and there's a space on the next one, and that's purely because I've actually ordered the unlimited versions of both the Sneak Attack and the Here Comes Team Rockets. <clears throat> now these are both first edition hollows. As you can see, there's a tiny little bit of hollow there up in the top left. And again, for this one, if I can get the light to show, there's a bit hollow there. But they are both first edition hollows, which is quite nice. I then also have the hollow and regular unlimited hollow <clears throat> first edition rainbow energies. And then we get to the non hollow variations. Now, the non hollow Dark Charizard actually still holds a lot of value. I think it's about a £20 card, which is quite astounding for a non-hollow. Uh, one of my poorer condition cards there, the Dark Gyarados. You can see it's not in the best condition, I'll probably replace that one sometime soon. And we get the likes of Dark Charmeleon, which I absolutely love the artwork on that. Uh, again, I do have a few of the first edition commons and uncommons for this set. Dark Jolteon. Absolute fan favourite. Kadabra, Machok, Dark Muck, first edition there. Dark Primeape, first edition. 
<clears throat> Vaporeal there, first edition. War Turtle, <clears throat> looking very pissed. Porygon, now if anyone played the original Pokemon game, I believe that's a little bit of an easter egg towards the Porygon you could get from the, the slot machines. I think that would be the prize box that it actually came in, which I think is quite cool. Uh, Abra, now is it just me, <clears throat> or does Abra sitting up here remind you very much of a more recent card? And I think it's, is it Elgium from one of the more recent sets where he's sort of sitting on top of a spire like that? <clears throat> I don't know why, but it, it always reminds me of that. Got a nice little first edition Team Rocket Charmander there. And I do really miss the old sort of hand-drawn artworks. I tend not to see that now with a lot of the CGI stuff and things like that. But you can't beat the old Wizards of the Coast hand-drawn Pokemon cards. <coughs> There's a cool little one. So the Grimer in the Japanese set actually has the eyeballs both pointing up to the, the top top right so it kind of looks like it's kind of looking up the girl's dress uh, I think it's commonly referred to as the dirty grimer uh, but in the English set, set it was actually changed to make it more child friendly <coughs> so as you can see quite a few first editions for the commons I think I might have all of the common first editions if not, I'm only missing one or two. I think Squirtle might be one of them. No, I've got Squirtle. Voltorb's definitely one of the ones I'm missing. <clears throat> now, the very last card I'm going to show you is a little bit of a shame because it's not actually kept with all of the hollow foils. But it is the first secret rare, as far as I'm aware. And it is that absolutely gorgeous Dark Raichu card from Team Rocket. Uh, I remember wanting this card so bad when I was a kid and I could never get it. So it was one of the first cards I had to buy when I came to buy the Team Rocket set. But there we go guys, that is the first binder in my collection. Let me know what you think, let me know which binder you would like to see next, if any. Um, yeah, let me know if you like the way that I've got my cards laid out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching guys, I will see you all next time. Stay safe.